Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farmer Envoy Stream here. Here we are on the 17th of April 2024. After a day of new mods, we've got a bunch of new mods and a few updates. So, as always, time to be down below. And I'll start off with going over some of the updates of the two maps, Fairlands, or Fairhead, sorry, and Fairing Countryside. And then we'll get on to the mods for today. Starting off with our updates, we've got update 1.1 to Fairhead. And no new game save is required and the change lock is following. Remove fence panel in the roads, fix missing textures, improve forestry besides Fairview farm, improve silage pits, fix issues with gates, fix lighting animations, fix side door animations, increase animal feed and surge capacity and other fixes. And Fairing Countryside has also got an update, change of 1.1, and it says no new game save is necessarily required. However, things marked with an asterisk will reflect only on a new game save, and that is third from the bottom, which is fixing snow snow mask for pre placed farm buildings. There'll be no more empty, non snow covered errors when some buildings were covered. Along with this, some minor changes including French translations, some minor visual and gameplay improvements, simplified some derails and railroad props. But yeah, some of the big changes on this map is including full support of the Prim DLC, full support for the Manure system which is a PC only mod, full support for the Straw Harvest add-on mod by Creative Mesh, and on placeable cowboy variants without pastures, added Placeable bunker size that accepts alfalfa and clover. Added new crops, alfalfa and clover, and incorporating them into the animal feeding system. Increasing the speed significantly of the fruit and vegetable processing plant. Along with that, added icicles hanging from the roofs of all buildings on the map, visible during the winter. And yeah, the final big changes are remove the liquid manure on the main farm and pig farm as a standalone pre placed object set. They're now part of each animal barn and they are in terms of their corresponding to. And yeah, it says obviously move your story out before updating the map, otherwise you end up losing it. And the last one is adjust weather, lower average temperatures for the summer and winter. Temperatures during summer should not go over extremes as 4 degrees for the Mac country. And a cold winter, so snow can potentially last longer, so that is interesting, and yeah, that is Changelog 1.1 to Capafarian Countryside. And starting off with our new mods of today, we've got the All Deco Trees. This is by Caleb Zeric, 59 kilobytes to download, so a very, very tiny download size. And yeah, essentially, this is a pack of 51 trees. These vary from saplings and small trees up to tall large and old trees and we got a variety of trees including like american elm shag bar hickories olive trees pines spruces and yeah these can all be cut down with either a chainsaw or a tree harvester or the things like the small trees and that yeah i recommend using like the chainsaws and that but for like your medium and large trees, as always, yep, a tree harvester will be able to cut these down. So you'll find these under landscaping and under trees. So yeah, once you go past your normal trees, you'll see these. So all you can tell them this got the lizard farming. And yeah, each of these are is pretty much exactly the same slot count as. So yeah, and you place these down and yeah. So place them down again will require the same amount of slots. So for example, got your young American elm tree, got your small American elm, medium American elm. So yeah, it goes from four to six slots. Next got your birch sapling, three slots, young birch, small birch, medium birch, large birch. And then on to our cypress. So you've got your young cypress, your small cypress, medium cypress, large cypress. Next, you got your small downy service berry. 
Next you got your medium downy service berry, large downy service berry, then you got your maple tree, small oak, medium oak, large oak, and next we got the small pagoda dogwood, medium dogwood, large dogwood, the next you got your pine saplings, young pine, small pine, medium pine, large pine, and your old pine. Next got your poplar, so you got your small poplar, medium poplar, large poplar. Next we got your shag bark hickory, so zoom in once more, you got your small, medium, large, and your old shag bark hickory. So yeah, see a lot of these are like round one, two, four, five slots. Get the odd three and six slots here, but overall not too bad. The next you got your young spruce, medium spruce. So these will be your normal trees you'll be used to seeing, especially on this map on No Man's Land. Old spruce. Then you got your spruce sapling, small spruce, small stone pine, medium stone pine, large stone pine. Then you got your willows. Got your olive tree. Oh yeah, that is very small. Got a medium olive tree, a larger olive tree, and that is it. So yeah, that is 51 trees, so yeah, it costs between 20 bucks, dollars or pounds to place, up to 3,500, so overall, not too bad. And yeah, the prices also depend on your economy sense, so if you're on easy mode, it'll be quite low, and hard mode will be a bit higher. But regardless, this is the All Deco Trees by Caliv Zeric. Next, we've got the Grain Storage and Machine Hall. This is by Noob Frax. 8.45 megabytes to download, 24 slots for console. And yeah, this is a Grain Storage and Machine Hall, as in the name, so this can hold 1.7 million years of items. Unfortunately, this ain't a multi-fruit silo. And yeah, I forget how to help menu up. Got your door there. Sides close. Door that opens. L3 to toggle your light switch. Got another door on that side. Go to this side. Got another door here. And then that slides open, so you can slide your machinery in. So yeah, let's go into our John Deere sec. Let's open that up. Not much of a sound there, but regardless, so... Yeah, let's hop into our John Deere. Obviously, we just fill this up with some moats, but... I'm just going to show you where it all goes in and out, so... There we go. L3 fill up, so it empties from the main pipe there. And then we want to tip in, you can tip multiple props of different varieties in. Yep, not too bad. Decent space, could fit a couple of large combines in that, or a couple of large combines and some other combine you're using. Let's pull out of here. So yeah, you'll find this under build mode, and you know on the mod hub it says category silos. It is under sheds, 45 grand to place, 150 to upkeep, it's got 15 different colour options. See, so yeah, overall not too bad, not too shabby indeed. Do like the detail and yeah, very modern. And yeah, this will be suitable for, I think more of like an American map, but even a British map this could fit in, depending on the map. But regardless, that is the Grain Storage and Machine Hall by Noob Frax. Next, we're at the shop and this is the Maxi Wielder the Pack. This is by Fred Modin and Nico Do 55. 22.51 megabytes to download and this is a Maxi Pack T9 tools for your wielders. Oh yeah, made in France, it says on mod description. So yeah, got your pallet forks, so if we go from yeah, got your pallet for, size forks and that. But yeah, let's go over 
on here. So yeah, you'll find this under tools and of course wither tools. But because I've got the CSC pack, I'm not going to scroll through. So yeah, we've got your shovel. That is two slots, goes down to one. So yeah, let's go through each by each. So with an option, you've got no front blade or front blade. Next, got your side fork. Three slots, goes down to one. Main color options, black or red, and that is the main little spiky bit forks. Pilot fork, two slots goes down to one. Log fork, three slots goes down to one. Next got your mineral grab fork, three slots goes down to one. And again, black or red color options for the little spiky bits. For your mineral fork, that is two slots, so black and red as always for the little spiky bits. Then got your high dump bucket. This is three slots goes down to one. Once again, no front blade or a front blade. Then second to that, you got your high dump bucket. This is with a little gra grapple, as I would call it. So once again, got no front blade or front blade. Four slots goes down to one. And then lastly, got your grapple bucket. Three slots goes down to one. Front blade, yes or no. And also with or without side borders. Oh yeah, overall capacity is about 2,000. So yeah, 2,000 to 8,000 liters. Very typical of what you'll see with similar base game stuff. So let's go over each and every one of them because some of these actually do have a nice form of functionality to it. So we got the grapple bucket. So L1. Oh, yeah, it just does that. So, R1, right stick, left to right, closes that. L1, R1 does nothing. It's not that one. I think it's one of these ones here that I really like. I think it's this one here. The, yeah, hide that bucket with the grapple. Because, yeah, all you got your L1, R1 stuff and that. But, yeah, so let's go L1, R1, nothing. R1, so right stick, left to right, opens and closes the little grab bit, just completely close that, then press up and down, this not only dumps, but also opens the little grab bit, this stop me doing it left to right, but yeah, as you tip, it opens and closes, so actually that ain't too bad. Then, yep, go over to your bucket over here. And that's just your normal high dump in that. And, yeah, I can't remember if it's this size of, like, manure fork over here. Or if it's the size fork. I think it's the size fork that's got a nice, yeah, bit of kit. So, let's go over here, Nat. So, yeah, they just dump as always. Size fork. So L1, right stick net, just does that. But yeah, what I like about this is the folding animation. So press L1 and X, and it slowly folds it as in real life. Love that hydraulic sound as well. Not too shabby. It's not overly fast, but it does the job. Grab the log fork in that. Opens and closes. A very large log fork as well. In fairness. And then lastly to the cat, we go and grab this. This is the I think it's yeah, the mineral grab fork. So yeah, opens and closes. So, and then yeah, it just tips like that. But yeah, let me just show you picking up some items with one of these sets. So let's go and grab this. So there we go. Opened, and yeah, just go and grab. And yeah, it does have that sort of like leveling effect as well, in a way. 
I think he has just more of the physics than that. And yep, we'll go and dump this, so... Let's completely close it. I am once again, R1 and down. No, sorry, R1 and up on the control. That simultaneously opens. And yeah, overall, not a bad bit of kit. So yeah, that is the Maxi Builder Pack by Fred Modding at Nico D55. Next, we've got the Manito CBG 2450MS. This is by 76 Max, 4.65 megabytes to download, 4 slot for console, and yeah, essentially this is just a little bucket and grapple for a tay hander. So you'll find this under tools and tay hander tools. Go towards the end. And right at the end for me, accepts and holds pretty much everything, including the, the premium items and that. Manure, mineral feet, snow and all that. So yeah, four slots goes down to one, holds two and a half thousand liters. And yeah, it says attach a type, so you got your Manito one, or you got a just a normal Tay Handler one. And yeah, even though it looks significantly different, in terms of attaching to a tay hander, it does not matter. Like I've tried it with both, with a tay hander like this, I've attached attached this to a Manito tay hander, and I've done it with a normal tay hander with this because yeah, I thought I saw the different types, and I thought oh, it'll be interesting. But yeah, I've used all the tay handers, and it does not matter. So. Let's go and grab this one here. There we go. So yeah, it turns with your animation, so just get a good angle there. R1, right stick left to right. Opens and closes that grapple. And that is a fast chomper, that is. Up and down, you know, just as that. And then yeah, just tip your bucket like so. And once again, you've got a little mineral pipe pile over here, not in your pipe. Yeah, doesn't do a, any kind of leveling in that. Overall looks too, not, does have some weight to it now, but overall, not too shabby. How does this handle lie? So, just going to one of my main points, so let's go and grab some lime, because lime is the heaviest item in FS22. And yeah, I got no weight with this and it handles it no issues whatsoever. I'm not sure if this is because if it's because of a coding thing, the XML file with like its mass is false or yeah, like the total mass is false. Obviously it weighs like almost 900 kilograms on its own, but when it's got items in it, it has no mass, if that makes sense. Things like the X like tomorrow. Unreal capacity traders and that. Like mass equals false now, or DJ Goam's uh, recent video on that on XML editing that. So yeah, overall, not too bad. Can hold any items and yeah. Don't need to worry about having a weight with this. So yeah. This is the Manito CBG 2450MS by 76 Max. Next we've got the Yaron N Sensor ALS. This is by Jonas. 1.11 megabytes to download. Slot count is 2, goes down to 1. And yeah, essentially this is a crop sensor for nitrogen. Does require the Position Farm DLC mod, of course. Costs 27,400. And you'll find this under Tools and Miscellaneous. Go to the end. Weighs 150 kilograms. And it's got a working speed of 11 miles an hour. So. Yeah, first of all, when I first looked at this, on the photos on the mod hub, it looks like it's on top of a tractor. How do you get from the ground to up there? Do you lift it in that? Nope. What you have to do is hop into any tractor. It attaches via a free point linkage. Then it says using uh, some buttons and that with the mouse and that, but obviously that's for PC. For console, so yeah, all you have to do is press L1 or R1. L1, R1 turns it on or off. 
So yeah, to get it onto the top of the tractor. So L1 and R, so yeah, L1, right stick, up and down, raises and lowers that. And then left to right, just adjusts it forward and backwards. R1, right stick, left to right, shifts it side to side, like so. And then R1, right stick, up and down, rotates it, so you can rotate it. Got a 180 degrees rotation, depending on how you like to orientate it. So yeah, let's go and bring this up. Of course, with this, Nat, since you've got this, the problem's going to be where that you're not able to use your front three-point linkage anymore. So yeah, let's get it roughly like so. So yeah, as long as it looks right now to you. And then yeah, so it's got your crop sensor, so when you're planting with a planter of sorts, like so. So yeah, we've got our planter net or cedar net. Let's turn crop sensor on. So yeah, basically it just monitors the nitrogen net on the ground and yeah, I think because I've got no nitrogen on the ground on the first place and I haven't set this up for precision farming in any form, in shape, yeah, any way, shape, or form. Yeah, all I've done is just sort the precision farm DLC mod in that. So yeah, I think I need to do your, like, crop, uh, what's it, science stuff in that. There we go, that's, yeah, purchase your soul something, that's better. See, it's got an actual better re reading now, so... But yeah, so... We'll detach you. Because yeah, once you're done with this, you need to be careful of how you unload it, so... You need to put it back to where you've attached it, because otherwise, it will go like this. Okay, fair enough. It ain't going crazy but while setting this up it was going absolute manic because I was just going like, all over the place darting across the map so now you can't grab it so let me grab another one sec like so so yeah we need to return it to position and then you can just dump it onto the ground as normal if you've got this up a little bit like so it will fully sit onto the ground, and if you do this and detach it, it will go underground. So, and yeah, potentially you can just use this entirely, I think. Oh, no, no, I think so. Still registering, so. Let's raise that up. And yeah, so just be careful of how you're unloading it. Because otherwise, you can have potential fun with that. There we go. That's the kind of jiggery pookiness I was talking about. So, yeah, that is the Yara N Sensor ALS by Jonas. Next, we've got the Grimmy BLF 200. This is by 76 mats, also. Slot count is 5 slots, goes down to 1. And yeah, essentially this is a subsoiler, so you'll find this under tools and subsoilers. Go towards the end, 15 grand, 3.4 meter working width, 8 miles an hour top speed, weighs 1.2 tons and requires 160 horsepower. And yeah, also just show there is no options in that as well. But yeah, so let's go and attach to a John Deere. That is up, so yeah, it's a very simple subsoider, but I do love the simplicity of it. So L1, lower, and it's subsoiling. Also, you've got an, an option to create fills if you wish. Also, you press L1 up, so you've got your ridge markers left. And then press up again, got your ridge markers to your right. And then L1 up on D-pad once more, brings both of them up. But yeah, besides from that, no other little animations or that, or little details to know. 
But yeah, overall, not too bad a bit of a kit. Yeah, very simple, very rudimentary, but it's basic at the end of the day. I say just hit Ridge or Nap to improve the preparation of the land, so really you do something like this to prep it for potatoes, but you still can use this for just plowing in general net. You know, crane fills if you want to, so doesn't need to be for potatoes, but if you want to, there it is. But anyways, that is the Grimmy BLF 200 by 76 mats. Next, we've got the Lizard S208 and S227. This is by Hatchdell EE and RMC. 7.06 megabytes of downloads, and yeah, essentially this is a potato planter. And this is the Lizard version of their KPMR S208 and their AKP. AKPIL S227 that was released back in the 11th of November of last year. So, this is their cross, pl cross play version, there is a branded version. So, yeah, you'll find this under Tools and Potato Technology. Go towards the end. One and a half grand initially. Only requires 20 horsepower. 180 year capacity. Weighs 225 kilograms. And yeah, sort counts five goes down to one. And yeah, you can fill it with seeds or potatoes. So yeah, you got your S208, your 1986 version, S2081, which is 1989, and you got a version two of that same year. Then your S227 is your 2003 version, version one, version two. And yeah, all that changes is just the branding. The terms with the wheels, we've got blades or no or spurs or both or none. So not too bad. Let's go with spurs and all that. Platform, yes or no. Main cutter is a variety of greys or blacks, so that would change the platform and the actual sort of like plowing bit there on the back or the sort of closer and that where it closes and that the seats or the, yeah the jewels that close the seats so anyways on to design color this is going to be your hopper and that so once again got a variety of greys greens and some form of red reddish orange and design color that is the actual little drill bits and that at the top there that goes down to these pipes so yeah drill pipes the hopper and that not the hopper that the pipes and that but anywho so yeah I thought yeah let's grab the Volvo crew bat get you hooked on so yeah it says fold and unfold but I can't find anything that does anything like that Guessing just folding and unfolding is turn on and off. But yeah, so we're planting potatoes. No other forms of animations now to know. Yeah, it runs at four miles an hour, but at the end of the day, it does what it needs to do. It's more suited again for your small farms and that. It's like more of a bench survival s kind of things. But we're a bit old school now. Then, yeah, this is a big kit to have. But, do you like how it attaches now? Not too bad. So let's go and pull this way. So yeah, that is the Lizard S208 and S227 by Hadrocell EE and RMC. Next, on to our second to last mod of the day. I'm not going to swap things up here because, yeah, for a final mod of the day, something that I think is worthy of mod of the day. But anyways, we've got the Beat Bulb Pulp Plant by Hacker Design. 17.01 megabytes to download. Slot count is 23, and yeah, it says uh, things like it says, yeah, output sugar beet pulp. However, as you see here, we're getting sugar beet cut. 
And this is like a map thing in that, I'm not sure. Whether it's No Man's Land or the actual mod itself, I'm not too sure, but as it is, as I'm reviewing it today, all essentially this is a 25 grand sugar beet cutter and it's not the fastest cutter in the world. So yeah, in terms of capacities, input and output, it is 600,000 litres. 20 in, 20 out, and 1,120 cycles per month. That means it's got a processing capacity of 38,400 liters. And to process all 600,000 liters at its max capacity to fill that up, that's going to take 15.625 months. So 15 and a half years, basically. No, 15 and a half months. So. Or one and a quarter years, so yeah, one year, three months, whatever metric number and that you want to call it. But anyway, so you'll find this under build mode, under productions, and yeah, so towards the end. So yeah, 25 grand place, 23 slots goes down to one, no color options or anything of like that. But yeah, this has got a nice marked out errors of your input and output. So your output is here, inputs here, so you can either dump it here or tip it in via a wheel loader, front loader, or whatever. And yeah, daily upkeep is £50, dollars euros a month. But anyways, that is the Beat Pulp Plant by Acker Designer. Next, on to our final mod of the day, we've got the Lizard T127 and T127+. Plus. This is by Buddha Week Team, 9.55 megabytes to download. Slot count is three slots for both of these items. And yep, essentially this is a Grand Bell Bell Loader. Can hold eight or twelve bales. And yeah, I'm not sure if I said the size of more than that, 9.55 megabytes to download. So yeah, you'll find this under Tools and Bell Loaders, no surprise. Go to the end, or depending on what mods you've got. So for me, it's about halfway. 45 grand and 39 grand. So yeah, only can carry the small 125 centimeter round bells. You can use this with the quick quick bell nat. So if you've got your quick quick bell nat, it won't work with the selectable bell capacity mod. I've tested that. But yeah, so you can either hold 12 bells or 8 bells. 3.5 tons or 3.2 tons. Terms of configurations are both exactly the same. So you've got Treadboard, Standard, or White. Got your Nokian White, Mission White, BKT Standard, Versailles Standard, Lizard White, and Treadborg. And yeah, back to your Nokians and that. Terms of color options, you got your original New, your Red Old, your Fort Schritt Red, or your Fort Street Green, or your Fort Street Blue, or however you pronounce it. Do you apologize for butchering it? So yeah, that changes the main body color net. And yeah, for your rims, so you got grey, beige, silver, silver two, or galvanized. So yeah, let's go and hop into our John Deere. And yeah, this is a nice bit of kit. Yeah, but now all the mods we've had today, I'll say this is my personal favourite. It's very, it suits the older maps. So if you're running, let's say, a Bavarian map or something like that, German map, or something East European now, or something like reminiscent of the 80s and that, I think this would be very suited. So, so yeah, let's go and grab the bells. It grabs those two bells very quickly, moves it back. And yeah, in terms of the pickup as well, it's actually quite decent, so let's go to the left. Yeah, like so. You don't have to be perfectly aligned. And yeah, it just does it. So this will hold 12 bells. Let's get the last four on. And yeah, just the animation, I actually enjoy that. So yeah, quite, yeah, just outside of that pickup range, but anywho, we'll grab those. So yeah, 125 cm around bells, so this could be hay, grass, straw, or silage. 
So yeah, we want to put it into transport mode. And yeah, just pulling it with a normal tractor ain't too bad. Yeah, no other options than that. But yeah, let's go. That will go down. And that will go literally 90 degrees vertical. So you can store this in sheds and that. Yeah, just got to be careful of what shed it is and that. But yeah, so... Uh, was it L1? Yep, yeah, L1 triangle to unload. And yep, yeah, we'll just do that. Love the hydraulic effect and yep, yeah, got your bells here. And that is all of your mods today for the 15th of April. So yeah, this is my personal favourite mod of the day. And yeah, but, and as always, if you enjoyed these mod reviews and that, smash that button, feel free to down below. If you want to share it, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to channel yet, then please consider. But for you to do, hope you nice stay. But for now, just be far more your stream. And I'll see you all. A very soon.